Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today I'm super excited because I finally have the new frag tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now I am super excited that I finally have the new frag tank. This is going to allow me to consolidate some of the other tanks and actually just get myself down to two tanks, which has been one of my goals. But on top of that, this is going to give me a lot of room to kind of play and experiment. Um, I really think kind of the future of the hobby is going to be aquaculture and I think it'd be really cool to do some more videos on kind of how to grow coral and how to frag different species and how to truly propagate stuff in a nice sustainable way. So this is gonna give me lots of space to play with to do that, so super duper excited for it. So the tank just showed up. It was built by Concept Aquariums in Calgary. Six foot seven inches long for the display, 28 front to back and 14 inches deep. And on the back, so I put black vinyl on the back of it. Um, if you guys wanna do that, I've done a couple videos on that before. Uh, you guys also saw me build this light bar in a future or a previous video. Um, I'm gonna actually do purple plumbing on this one just because it is a color I've never done before. So this is what's going to be on the piping on there. Unfortunately, I'm a couple pieces short. Usually that happens. So I got to order a couple more bulkheads and a few little pieces to kind of get this plumbed up, but I'm starting to plan everything out. So really love the dimensions. This is going to give lots of room to play with. Um, I do have dual return nozzles on here and I'm kind of contemplating if I either tee them off, off one pump or if I just do two separate pumps. So we'll see. Uh, I do have the external overflow on here. And I got the three drains, so it'll be the bean animal style. So the one's gonna come down directly to the clarity. You can see that one little screw in the light bar. So I put one little peanut in there, and that kind of holds the light bar in place. So if I want to raise or lower it, I can just loosen that, lift it up a little bit, retighten it. So it's super easy. So I'm thinking in the first chamber, I have the clarity, and then I'll put the skimmer. Uh, next chamber over, I'm still debating how to work this one. If I should do a refugium or if I should just do a ton of biomedia in here, maybe do the LED tour scrubber, so we'll figure that one out. Um, left a, about a one and a quarter gap for the baffles, that way I can run some kind of bright, like a bright well plate or something in there for my biomedia. Again, I'm probably gonna have a ton of media in here just because there's gonna be no rock really in this tank. And the last chamber is a return chamber. So coming over next, I got a 10 gallon ATO container. Now I think what I'm gonna do is run something like a Toonzy ATO controller on this. And I'm gonna just put my RODI right at the edge here. I left that little gap. I got water lines ran up here, so I got my water in my drain, plus next to drain. So if I have like the reef bot or one of my testers, it's piped to the drain, I don't have to empty waste containers, so that's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, or if I did out a water change, I can kind of tee into that later on. Uh, for calcium reactor, this is the Cove one, I actually went off the Facebook contest. So that's gonna be the main supplementation for the corals. And there might be a little bit of dosing on top of that. I'm still debating how to work that one. Now for the base, I cut a nice big chunk of plywood, painted it white. I think that's 5 eighths plywood, so that gives me a nice solid foundation for my sump and put everything on it. Uh, the sump is actually glass, but I trimmed it out in acrylic just to give it a little bit of a fancier look. So that's one thing I got concept to do for me, which turned out pretty awesome. And underneath the tank, again, got a nice big chunk of plywood. I just painted that black to blend it in. Then if you look underneath the tank, it is two inch steel tubing all around. And I put a couple plates in the middle, so I got nice support. I still got space for plumbing or whatever goes underneath. And a big thing that I'm always a fan of, no center braces, which makes it really easy to work on. So yeah, so far pretty stoked for it. The drains are gonna be pretty darn simple. I'm obviously gonna have a gate valve on the main drain and they're just gonna go directly straight down into the sump. So you really can't get simpler to that. First step before we install the bulkheads, I always like to give things a quick little wipe out, get out any little dust or particles that built up. And then we are gonna install our bulkheads. So we screw the bottom off. We do have this little gasket or flange. The flange always wants to go on your wet side of the tank. So in this case, wet side would be the inside of our overflow box. And we screw the nut onto the bottom. Now for actually tightening them, I like to use these kind of slip nut wrenches. What are they called? Slip and lock nut wrench. Um, so you can adjust this one out to whatever size you want for the bulkhead, put it on, just get a little snug up. Um, 
these are, I find these are the easiest way. It's the only nice, easy way to tighten a bulkhead. So these are pretty inexpensive and a great tool to have in building a tank. Now, a big thing with the bulkheads is you don't want to over tighten them because if you actually over tighten them, they could leak. So you just want to make it snug, but not too overly tight. On the drain pipes, I always like to add a bulkhead um, below the bottom of the tank line. And I do this because if you ever move the tank, you're going to have pipes hanging down. It's going to make it awkward to sit it down anywhere. Put a bulkhead here, you can unscrew it, and then you only have this little stubby pipe on the bottom. You can actually move the tank nice and easily. Now this step isn't absolutely required, but when I cut a chunk of pipe, I like to do a quick little sand on the edges to get rid of a little bit of a burr on the edge. And this is just going to help make sure there's no little scratches or anything as you glue the pipes together. Now another thing I do is put the flange slide on the top. That way if you unscrew it, it doesn't fall down and bang around everywhere and become a bit of a pain. And when I push into the fitting, I also give it a little slight twist. And what that does is just kind of make sure the glue, everything is kind of seated and spreads inside nicely. And if you went through the effort of using kind of the colored PVC piping, make sure you pick up clear primer and clear glue as well. Now for your main drain, I always recommend using a gate valve and it's worth spending a little bit extra on like a quality one like a Spears, mainly because long term in a year or two from now, it's still going to be easy to turn. And that's kind of important, right? You don't want it to be a pain in the butt long term and have to try and replace it at some point. Not worth that effort, so. Just finished gluing the last two drain pipes and I'm actually really digging the, the purple and gray. It looks pretty cool together. So the main drain comes down, it goes into a Spears gate valve. And from there, it goes directly down into the Claris seat. Now, everything is glued up until that last joint. Um, there's really no reason to glue that one going into it because if it leaked a little bit underwater anyway, so who cares? Um, it's got the gate valve nice and tight to the top so I can fine-tune my main drain. Uh, the next two are just going to come down directly into here. One will be the trickle drain and the other will be the emergency drain. And we look on the back side here, we've got our bulkheads and right below it we have our unions. Now the unions are just a little bit above the bottom of the tank so if I ever have to move the tank, I can unscrew them and they're not going to be in the way of these pipes everywhere. So our stand pipes are installed and this is called a bean animal style drain. So this I'm just going to leave really low with just a mesh guard on it. And this is a full siphon. So this is our main drain. And what we do is we tune the gate valve until the water, and we can use that to control how much drains, which is going to control the water level in this box. And I'm going to set it so the water just trickles over the edge. And now if it just trickles over, the water rides the outside of the tube and it's not going to make any noise. Um, so we look through the side, you can see it's just above the little grate there, just below it. Now the next drain over is much higher. So this is about, you know, half an inch above that one. So in theory, this drain will stay dry and never get used unless for some reason one of those got clogged and this works as just an emergency backup. Now it's always good to kind of dry fit these first, but one thing to keep in mind is that when you put these connectors together, they always, they're never going quite as far as when you actually glue it. Like once you apply the primer and the glue is gonna soften it, they're gonna push in. So make sure you're, you're not too tight and you leave a little bit of extra room knowing that it's gonna compress as you glue them together. And if you do push it together, it can be a bit of a bugger to get it apart if you make it too tight. So inside of these fittings, is actually a very slight taper, which is why it actually kind of makes it harder to pull it apart sometimes. So next step is going to be install these kind of power adapters. Now, before I fill the tank, obviously need to get the power adapters out of the sump. And what I'm gonna do with these guys is screw them underneath the tank. So kind of up here, mount some of them up there underneath because you're not gonna see them from the bar. So they'll be nice hidden out of the way. Now this is also gonna be like an open stand design. So not gonna have panels on it. So there should be lots of airflow still. So that shouldn't be an issue. And to mount them up there, I'm gonna be using some of these little brackets. So these are like the, I think they're from AI, but they, Go up there. Now they hold two screws. Historically, I've only popped one screw in each and it's been solid. And they'll screw into the plywood under the tank. Now you, of course, need to make sure your plywood can't pierce the tank. But we're only halfway into the wood there, so that should be issue free. And that will hold the five power bricks up there, which should make things nice and clean. Then I can kind of sneak the wire along the top later. And then once I get a power brick control center thing, uh, I'll probably use one of the adaptive reef ones again that I have on the other tank because that works really well. 
and we'll mount that on the right hand side of the tank and all our power bars and all our jazz can be inside of there. Um, so I did pick up a 20 pound or 10 pound CO2 tank the other day so that would be for the calcium reactor. And I bought a used Spectre Pure RODI of a buddy a while ago. So I ran those lines up so I'll get that hooked up today and we might start filling it in a bit. So that'll be good. So this tank's gonna have its own RDI. It's just gonna tuck right in this little gap here, which will be perfect. Out of the way, can auto fill the auto top off. I got the drain line there for the, so I got two drain lines and one water line. So one to come in, one for the waste. Then I have an extra waste line, which could be for the auto tester or maybe if I do a water change, I don't know, we'll figure out, but it should be good. We have all of the power adapters mounted. So we got these up tucked underneath. The wires will tighten up in a little bit and this can get some cable ties or zap straps or something to kind of hold and suck this up to the top then we're looking at the tank we shouldn't even see the wires which will be good now i also got the rodi hooked up so hooked up the two lines we have our main water on and off we have our flush valve and then we have our product water and now this guy is going to tuck right in the edge there kind of out of the way and 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 now we can start filling the tank so let the feeding begin. Now, this is probably going to be a fairly long, lengthy, long process. So we'll let her start to fill. And things are going to get exciting soon. Super excited for it. I got my two MP40s there. The other two are still in use on the other frag tank. So once I get take down that tank, then I'll add the other two. And we'll have four MP40s on the back wall blowing forward. And I'm also going to do dual return pumps. Um, just have the one down here for now and again this is just kind of sitting here waiting again to take down the other tank so I can snag those other pumps off it. But now we get to wait and let things slowly fill. In the meantime I actually decided I'm going to start cycling some of this media. So we have one of the Brightwell XLM bricks. I have some of these cubes I'm going to try out. Maybe put them between my baffles and get some kind of good media going and cycling for this tank. Um, so I am going to take the bricks from my other tank, plus I got an additional new one, some cubes, a few different things just to up a bunch of the surface area inside. And make sure there's lots to work with before we move stuff in. Now I'm going to be losing my sand bed, so if I use the existing media plus all this stuff, and I'm going to add in a little bit of the Quick Start XLM. So this is a bunch of the good psychobacteria, let this sit overnight, maybe a bit longer. And then I'll either add this to the tank directly or maybe I'll throw up my big tank for a day or so and let it seed a few more. But we'll see once we get all the salt mixed in there and get things rolling. So I'm trying to figure out why it's filling so slow. Just like the pressure gauge, it is down to nothing. Which means one of those two filters are clogged. So let's grab the new carbon and sediment. We'll get those in. And we're also going to have dual filters filling it up. So this should definitely speed things up. I am stoked to finally get this field and running. Now, I ran out of salt, so we're a little bit short. I think it's around 35 PPT, but it's getting close enough, so I have to go snag a bag off a of buddy or go pick up some later today. So lights, everything's mounted, water's flowing. Got the drains just about tuned in. You can see it's just trickling over that little bit of an edge into the sump, which is just about perfect. Now, on top of here, we just got it flowing down into the filter roller for now, and just the one return pump, and then this guy will get hooked up once I snag it off the other tank. Uh, now, one actually addition since the last clip is the calc reactor. So just pick this guy up, and I'm really curious to try running the calcium reactor with the calc reactor. So let the calcium reactor be about 80% of it, and we'll use the calc for that last 20%, mainly to get that big pH boost, because I'm really curious to see how that works and see if there's actually a big noticeable difference in coral growth, especially with kind of more of a propagation aim system. Now, this unfortunately is a smidge too low. If I would have planned that a bit better, so it might build like this little tiny little pedestal or something, get that just over the edge so that will drip into the sump and hopefully give us a nice solid pH boost. Hopefully you guys are excited about I am about this, but if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure to subscribe so you can follow along and I'll catch you guys on the next update.